every man a sinner. Some subjects are t- tasteful, distasteful, and some, and we seek to avoid them. Some are true, but it annoys us to hear them. Some are unplatable, and it displeases us to be reminded of them. Some are urgent, but we defer dealing with them. Is this true in your experience? Does the title of this leaflet irritate you? Do you find it unpalatable truth? Would you re- prefer to avoid or at least defer consideration of the issues involved, respectively? But with urgency and Christian charity, we would impress upon you the folly of delaying a consideration of your eternal destiny a moment longer. Procrastination is the thief of time. How speedily time slips by. How irresistibly death draws nearer. Many, how many had, whom you knew and perhaps loved started the year with you, but have not been spared to finish it. You have no certainty about your own lifespan. What a sound preacher is death. His text is, the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23. His message, prepare to meet that God, Amos 4.12. Can you hope to escape the universal debacle? How can you when all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. But you say, I am not a real a great sinner. You do not need to be a great sinner. Because the divine sentence is, whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet if I find in one point, he is guilty of all, James 2.10. If you have committed but one sin, you are as guilty as though all the crimes in the calendar were laid to your charge. You say, perhaps I have tried to be good. I have many good deeds to my credit. You consider <clears throat> that you have been better than some who claim to be Christians. If you have been good, how good have you been? Here is God's standard of goodness. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and, and, and thy neighbor as thyself, Luke ten twenty seven. If you have fallen short of this, you have reached the standard of rectitude that God requires. Perhaps you have sought to do good to those around you. Therefore, you feel you have in some measure fulfilled the second commandment. If the sake of argument. If for the sake of my argument I grant you this, how about the first, which Christ called the great commandment, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. You have surely not loved God to the extent that you have, you should have done. Probably the fact is that you have hated him. You have not sought him out, prayed to him, and served him to show that you love him. Of course not. You have shut him out of your mind and out of your heart. You have lived your life as though God did not exist. But now, but you know God loves you in spite of all your rebellion and sin. The Bible says here in his love, not that we love God, but that he He loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. First John 4, 10. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Even when you were hating God, he loved you and made a provision for your restoration and forgiveness. His way of doing this was through the death of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Would you receive pardon from the guilt of past sin, cleansing from the defilement of present sin, and release from the power of future sin? You can have all these through faith in Christ. Acknowledge yourself to be a sinner. Recognize that you cannot save yourself. Realize that he is the only one who can deliver you. Receive him as your Savior and confess him as your Lord. See if he will fail you. If he does... You will be the first. He has failed. Every man's a sinner, folks. Repent and believe.